Oh, all right. I want to uh, try to do this again. I attempted to make this video a little bit ago and realized I had no sound. So uh, here we go again. I want to do a video on this example. It's um, uh, basically an order of operations example of math. Uh, it's got 8 plus 8 divided by 8 plus 8 times 8 minus 8 equals. Um, it's really a good example of order of operations and uh, would like to go through this here. Um, seeing a lot of stuff online, uh, these types of math problems pop up from time to time on Facebook. Uh, they pop up elsewhere and they generate a lot of different answers from people who have a lot of confidence but uh, lack in some of their math skills. Um, although this might be considered a poorly written problem by some people, uh, it is a test of one's knowledge and math rules uh, that have been in place for centuries. Uh, order of operations rules have been around um, really since before the 16th century, around that time. Uh, they show up in math books in that period of time. Uh, around that time, exponents were added in, uh, so it uh, started to show up in the math books. So you've got uh, your parentheses and exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Um, I've seen a lot of debates swing back and forth with different people who toss out a, you know, a lot of bad logic. Um, they'll say things like, uh, oh, well, well, there's no parentheses, so you just solve it left to right. Or back in my day, we solved it left to right. Or before all this new math, we solved it left to right. Or, you know, back in my day when I was in school, it was this answer or that answer. You know, there are all a lot of confident opinions. Uh, but they don't have any basis in mathematics. Um, and like what I like to say is mathematics doesn't care about your feelings or your or your opinions. Mathematics is not subjective. Um, mathematics is not like going to an art gallery and admiring paintings and having some opinion of some artist. You know, there's no there's no impressionist mathematicians. There's no realist mathematicians. There's no cubist mathematicians. It's not open for interpretation or opinion or voting or feelings. Uh, math is math. Uh, I know that's hard for some people. A lot of people want to be able to have whatever answer comes to them or what feels good to them, but that's not how math works. So, um, yeah, you know, order of operations have been taught uh, a lot longer than anybody's been alive, uh, whether they realize it or not. A lot of people just forgot and they want to believe that it's common core or new math or whatever. Uh, some people might remember order of operations. They might have heard uh, you know, sayings like, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Or maybe they've learned uh, you know, one of the different mnemonics that are used all around the world. You know, depending on where you're from, you might know it as PEMDAS. Uh, some places, I think, in Europe, you know, they might be BODNAS or Bedmus, I think I've even seen Bidmus somewhere, which that might be like in Australia or somewhere. I honestly, I don't know. Uh, I think some places they refer to parentheses as brackets uh, in English and brackets as parentheses. Uh, I'm more familiar with the PEMDAS version. That's what's you know typically been used a lot here in the United States. Um, <clears throat> frankly, I uh, I don't care much for any of those mnemonics. Uh, because they, they bring on a whole other level of confusion about what's really uh, proper as far as the order of operations. It gets people confused because rather than understand the order of operations, they just memorize the order of the letters. And then, you know, they believe with all their heart that, you know, multiplication comes before division. Or if they learn bodmas, they believe division always comes before multiplication because they memorize those six letters, you know, over and over and over. Uh, and that's that's what I hate about those mnemonics. Um, it's not a six-step process. You know, PEMDAS, BODMAS, BEDMAS, uh, order of operations is not six steps. There's only four. You know, you have to understand multiplication and division have equal precedence. Uh, addition and subtraction have equal precedence as well. Um, you're going to solve those in the order that you see them in the problem. Um, people get really confused. Uh, you know, multiplication, like I said, multiplication and division have equal precedence. They're simply solved left to right in the order that they're found. 
Uh, you know, multiplication and division are really the same operation. Division is just the multiplication of the inverse of a number. You know, you're basically saying I can, you know, divide 10 by 5, which is 2, or I can say let's multiply 10 by 1 fifth, which is also 2. So basically, you can either call that a division by 5 or a multiplication by 1 fifth. It's the same thing. That's why they have the same uh, precedent. So uh, the same is also true for addition and subtraction. They have equal precedents, and they're solved from left to right in the order that they're found. You know, PEMDAS could have been written as PEDMAS or PEDMASA or however you want to say it. Um, that's why I don't like the mnemonics, because they just confuse people to memorize letters and not really understand order of operations. It doesn't help you understand the fact that multiplication and division are really the same operation. It doesn't help you understand that addition and subtraction are really the same operation. Subtraction is just the addition of a negative number. You know, instead of saying, you know, 5 minus 1, I could say 5 plus minus 1. It's the same thing. Um, uh, so it's the same thing, equal precedence. Um, you know, another common fallacy I see is that a lot of people will say, well, if you don't have any parentheses, you just solve left to right. Uh, that's really a big one. Um, I see it posted a lot by people. You know, regardless, uh, you still are going to solve by the order of operations. If I look at this, these four steps and I don't have any parentheses, I go next, do I have any exponents? No. So the next thing I've got is multiplication or division. Now this, this is a simple problem that we've, we're faced with here with all these eights. We're only dealing with multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So we're dropping down to step number three here. Uh, if you don't have parentheses, you go to exponents. If you don't have exponents, then you look at multiplication or division left to right. Then you look at addition or subtraction left to right. So, um, you know, a lot of people are just forgetting it and they're getting confused. And a lot of people seem to be suffering from really the same amount of confusion on this. <clears throat> so anyhow, let's, let's forget all this stuff and move on. Let's just do this simple problem. And um, hopefully it makes some sense. Um, once again, it's 8 plus 8 divided by 8 plus 8 times 8 minus 8 equals. Um, so according to order of operations rules, we're going to solve the division first and then the multiplication. And that's because the division comes first when we're moving left to right through the problem. So the first thing we're going to do is divide 8 by 8. 8 divided by 8 is what? It's equal to 1. So now we replace the 8 divided by 8 with a 1. So we have 8 plus 1 plus 8 times 8 minus 8 equals. Now the next thing we got to do, follow order of operations rules. It's very simple. Next operation is multiply 8 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64. So now our problem becomes 8 plus 1 plus 64 minus 8. All right, so now uh, you just have a simple addition and subtraction problem. And once again, um, it really doesn't matter the order that I do these in, but uh, uh, you're going to come out with 65. 8 plus 1 plus 64 minus 8 is equal to 65. And I'm seeing a lot of answers. Uh, one of the biggest ones is 72. And I think that's happening because of the people that are going left to right. And um, and I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but it was not taught that way in your day. So you either had uh, an incompetent math teacher, or you didn't pay attention, or you just forgot. So those, those are really your options to choose from. Uh, and I know a lot of people don't like to choose the options that involve you know, their own miscalculation or their own mistake. And they like to blame it on something else. So, uh, but anyhow, this is what it is. It's, it's 65. So. Um, I do hope this has helped. Um, another thing I want to remind people is that a lot of the devices that you guys are typing comments on when you're leaving these posts on Facebook and commenting, that same device, whether it's your phone, whether it's your computer, it has this funky thing called a calculator app built into it, which is really an amazing thing. Uh, a lot of people don't bother to uh, look at that. But um, 
if you do that, like here's an example, this is a <clears throat> scientific calculator right off of my Windows 10 machine. Uh, I've entered, I used the scientific calculator, not the standard. Uh, that way I could get access to my parentheses and add those in. So uh, there's a lot of confidently confused people out there who will refuse to use the device that they type their comments on to actually prove it to themselves what the answer is. So go use your calculator app and do it correctly. Um, I've seen people come back to me and try to say, aha, I got you. I don't get 65. And then I find out that they're typing the, uh, the equal sign after every operation. You know, they're going 8 plus 8 equals and then divided by equals. And then I don't know why anybody does that. Nobody does that. I mean, that's not how you use a cal calculator. You type the equal sign at the end. You know, that's that's how it's written. But um, I had to point that out because I've actually had a lot of people come back to me and go, aha, I got you, I got you. And then I find out they're not even entering it right into their calculator. So learn how to use your calculator, type it in, and it will, and it will show it to you. It, calculators are already programmed for order of operations. And remember, these rules have been around since at least the 16th century about that time you know i don't know exactly it could even be before that but uh, there's plenty of old uh, math books out there you can google that you can look it up for yourself uh, if you don't believe it um, it's all there on the internet man i'll tell you these days it's so simple you know when i was a kid you had to have a library card and get your mom or dad to drive you to the library and go figure out how to use the dewey decimal system a card catalog all the stuff's at your fingertips now. There's good and bad to that. You got bloggers out there. You got people out there who actually just post the wrong information. Anybody can make a website and post the wrong answer, and uh, and people will go, "Oh, look, see, this guy said it was 72. Look at that." Uh, you have to have some some cognition. You got to have some ability to to look at information and and figure it out. So, but anyhow, it's all there. You know, you could, there's plenty of good math websites, plenty of good tutorials out there. There's the Khan Academy, K-H-A-N. Uh, they've got some really good examples. You know, go check it out. Um, it's never too late to learn this stuff. So uh, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if not, I, I'm not sure what to say, but uh, good luck.